Good morning, YouTube. Matt M. Roy back again. I'm actually back to you guys with a video request from YouTube user Raymond Williams. Uh, he wrote, another great video, Matt, would be cool if you would do a video on the Sony cassette deck. That's definitely a great thrift store find. Keep the great videos coming. Well, Raymond, ask and you shall receive. This is the Sony, show you right there, model, if my camera will focus, TCWE 435 that I picked up this past weekend from the Goodwill. Uh, it's a thrift store in our area. A lot of you guys probably have them as well. This is kind of an interesting find because from all what I could tell, this particular unit, um, was pretty much new in box. Uh, it was opened, and I think it maybe was used a little bit, but this was as clean as cl a clean cassette deck as I've ever seen. So, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and show you some of the features of this fine uh, piece of Sony equipment. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to uh, demonstrate its sound quality because of the copyright infringement. Thank you, uh, Google. <laughs> but I digress. So let's start over here. Um, just got the normal power button here. This is not a soft power button. It's an actual switch in there. Underneath there, you have your direction mode. There's three options here. You have the uh, bi-directional, which just plays one side, stops, and then you have to turn the cassette over. That's pretty much the standard play for the older style cassette players. You have the uh, loop direction mode, which is this middle one here. Uh, that basically will play uh, both sides of one cassette deck continually. And then you have the relay mode, which will basically play one the one cassette deck both sides of the tape and it'll move over to deck B and play both sides of that tape so nice definitely a nice feature there um, you have the on off button here and this is for the pitch control now this was a very important feature to me because I do play some old cassette tapes uh, that I recorded years ago when I was younger on my Fisher Price cassette player of all things and unfortunately, those players were not that great at adjusting the pitch. So if I was to say just play that tape in here um, on the standard pitch, it would actually be either a little too slow or a little too fast. So what this allows me to do is turn that feature on and actually adjust the pitch either up or down. Basically, it's just controlling the speed of the motor um, and actually let me get the right speed to listen to my older tapes. You can see here it does boast that it has the auto reverse feature, high density head DC servo controlled motor. Basically, that's just a fancy way of saying it's a computer controlled deck. And the high density head just means it's made with uh, precious metals and good quality metals, so it gets a good read on the actual tape itself. Moving over here, we have the reset and the memory button. Basically, the memory is there for you to be easily be able to find a specific point on a cassette tape. Reset just resets the uh, counter, and there's one for the left and right side. Now, this is not by any means one of the higher cassette decks, and I could tell you that because you can see a lot of... Um, blanking here and really there's only one switch here and this is to engage the high speed or standard dubbing but there are other models like I believe the TCWE 635 and I think there's a 835 that actually had features like um, time stamping where you could actually uh, program this to start and stop at a fixed point on the tape but I'm not worried about that because that's not usually a feature I would use anyway down here you have your controls, uh, rewind, fast forward. This does do um, one track forward, one track ahead. So basically, if you want to forward to the next track on the cassette, you just push that button. It'll, it'll say one on here, and it'll just keep flashing. And it'll go one song ahead, basically. And that also works in reverse uh, for both decks. Got your stop and your two play modes, uh, playing on side A, playing on side B. Then down here, um, you have your Dolby noise reduction. This actually has Dolby B and C, which is a nice touch. Um, I have never actually had a cassette deck that has Dolby S, which was a later uh, version of Dolby. But you know what? That's okay. Most of the cassettes I play are usually um, encoded in Dolby B. Very few are even uh, coded in Dolby C, let alone Dolby S. So again, this is more than enough for what I need to use it for. You have your pause, record, and the record muting button there. 
Um, one thing I do really like about this is this has what they call the mechanical or the hard eject. I actually had a TIAC cassette deck that had a electronic eject, which was just like a soft button. You'd push that and you'd actually hear the motor eject the tape. Unfortunately, that had caused many, many problems. Uh, many times I had the cassette, de uh, cassette get stuck in there and I was unable to open it. I had to actually take the entire cassette deck apart and uh, yeah, that was just a really, really big mess. Now, coming over here, you have your record level. Uh, you do have the man, you can manually set the record level with this particular deck, but this also does have the auto record level function, which I do like. Basically, the way that works is you initiate um, a record using the record or the pause button, actually. And what'll happen is but you'll start playing a source. In my case, it's usually a CD. You'll play that for maybe 10 seconds. This uh, record light will actually blink until the uh, cassette deck gets the right level. And once it does, that'll, that'll actually be a solid red light. And then all you do is reset your source and then you're set to record. And that is a really nice feature because it is very, very hard to... Um, to basically guess as to what the correct level is sometimes. Um, I've used that in many, many of my other uh, cassette decks as well. Then you have your record uh, options here. You have the fader, the ARL, and then the uh, synchro, which I can't use because I don't have another corresponding um, Sony deck that will actually work with that. But again, it's not really necessary, but it is a nice touch on uh, Sony's part. Um, Got a regular headphone jack, though this is the larger, um, th what is this, um, three and a half or four and a half millimeter, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's the larger headphone jack, it's not the uh, standard one like you'd find on an iPod or most MP3 players. But that is pretty much the, uh, the features of this deck. I do have the manual, and there are a few interesting features I want to go over with you in this, so let's go to this over to this manual and uh, stay tuned. I think you'll find this section very interesting. All right, so luckily I was able to find this uh, Sony manual online. It's not very hard. Somebody had uploaded it as a PDF. I just downloaded it from uh, Google, and uh, there you go. As you can see, the cassette deck was made sometime around 1999, though, it may be one or two years off because this is not the exact manual that came with it, but it is for this exact model, the TCWE 435. Let me turn in here. There are a few very interesting features of this deck that I've never really seen on many other cassette decks I have. Wow, oh, something messed up there. <laughs> As you can see, it gives you the options for hooking up the system. This particular one has the regular RCA uh, inputs and outputs, and also has that, um, I believe it's called the remote connection, where you can connect it directly to another corresponding um, Sony cassette deck or other, um, per other accessory, and you can use that uh, synchro feature, but I don't have anything like that, at least right now, but who knows, maybe I'll find one in the future. You never know what you can get at the thrift stores. Uh, this is just basically explaining to you how the direction mode works. This is pretty much everything I explained to you guys before. How to record on a tape. Uh, explaining the the recording for the direction mode. Now that's kind of interesting. There's really only two options available when recording because of course you know there's only one record deck. You have the record on one side only or record on both sides. So the loop and then the uh, one side only which is like one arrow going one way, one arrow going the other. I like the way they explain that. That, that makes it pretty easy for people that uh, don't necessarily understand. Now, this is telling you about recording with uh, Dolby noise reduction. One thing I've always wanted to mention about that, um, if you're starting with a really good quality uh, recording, and even more important, if you're recording to a good quality cassette, i.e. a uh, chromium tape type 2 or metal tape, Dolby noise reduction is usually not necessary. Mainly when I record with Dolby, it's if I'm using a, a ferric oxide tape or a type 1 tape and my um, source tape isn't that good a quality. So you got to kind of play it by ear. So if you're using a really good quality tape, I wouldn't even bother using uh, Dolby noise reduction. 
Uh, this is just explaining uh, the memory map on here. I'm not going to really worry about that because I know this is not really a feature that most people use. But like suffice to say, basically what it allows you to do is find a specific point on a tape and be able to get back to that point easily. And it's not something that I use, but again, it is a nice feature to see on a lower end cassette player like this. Uh, automatic adjust of the record levels. Again, this is exactly what I explained before. Basically, um, it allows you to uh, let the cassette player automatically set the recording levels. A very, very nice feature to find on this. Um, fading in and out, uh, dubbing the tape. Um, let me read that for a minute. Let's see what it says here. You can gradually increase the recording level at the beginning of a recording fade in, or gradually decrease the recording level at the end of the recording, a fade out. It is convenient to use this feature, for example, when a tape breaches to its end and you don't want the track to be cut off abruptly. Yeah, it is a nice feature, and I have used it on occasion in the past, but mainly because I'm recording from another pre-recorded tape just for backup purposes. They already have the fade in and fade out effect uh, done on that, so it's really nothing that I would personally use. But again, one nice feature to see on a, on a fairly low-end uh, cassette deck. Uh, let's see what else we got in here for you. Uh, inserting a blank space during recording. Yeah, we're not too worried about that. Okay, this is actually playing with the uh, Synchro Record. Again, if you have a CD player, um, and I may be able to do it with the one I have, even though they're from different generations. I'll have to look into that, but basically you're able to connect it directly and it's like a automatic recording from the CD to the cassette, which again, very nice feature to find on this. Um, and this gives you a little bit of uh, background on the different types of tapes. And uh, this is very interesting. A lot of people uh, kind of get this confused. Um, type 1 tapes, as it pertains to the notches, pretty much just have a notch here and a notch there, one on each side. Then when you get into the Type 2 tapes, you have the same notches, but they're just a little bit bigger. They're about twice the size. And then when you get to the Type 4 tapes, that's when it kind of gets interesting. You have the same notches that you have on the Type 2 tapes, but you have these two notches in the middle, and what this is basically doing is it's letting the, it's telling the cassette deck what type of tape you're inserting. So when you put this tape in, it knows it's a type 2, and when you put this tape in, it knows that it's a type 4. A very, very nice um, feature that was uh, thought out very well in the early days, because before that, you actually had to change the settings on your cassette deck, and people would forget to do that, so they'd be playing a tape, type 2 tape, with the type 1 settings and they would just sound absolutely awful and I think that's a lot of the reason why people to this day always say cassette tapes never sounded that good. Not true. If you're playing them correctly they can sound very good. About to end this video but there's one thing I wanted to show you guys that I thought was a really nice touch that uh, Sony added. Uh, this is pertaining to the playback mode. I know I talked earlier about the uh, three, three modes. The one-sided mode the playing of both sides of one tape and then the relay mode which plays one deck and then the other one. Little note they have here, you can see it says this deck automatically stops playing back after five times. So basically, and I do this a lot, if you say fall asleep at night with this with the cassette deck playing, it'll go ahead and play both cassettes in unison five times and then the cassette deck will stop. And again, that's a nice feature because unlike something like a um, a digital audio like an mp3 player or an ipod this actually has moving parts and to play the cassette deck for a long period of time can put a lot of undue wear on things like the belts uh... the motors the cap stands and even puts a lot of wear on the cassette itself so again a very very nice feature that uh, sony thought to put in this um, to help not only um, preserve the longevity of the uh, cassette player, but just to make it more convenient. So, you know, let's say you're using this to go to sleep at night, playing back five times, say on an average of two tapes that are 60 minutes each, that's about eight hours, eight plus hours, so that's about what you would need. So when you wake up in the morning, the cassette player will pretty much automatically turn itself off. Well, that is my review of the Sony Stereo Cassette Deck model TCW435. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.